Welcome to Lab Results. We are live. Black Man Lab was started roughly four years ago uh, by founder, one of the founders, Molly Davis, and uh, three other men who got together to just have conversations with their sons. As we know quite often, as fathers with sons, our sons get to a certain age and they just tune us out, but they'll listen to somebody else. They'll listen to an uncle, a godfather, a close friend. And that person might say the exact same thing we're saying, but they'll listen to them versus us as fathers. I don't know why that's the case. I probably did it with my dad as well. Um, but we meet every Monday at the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA. Uh, we have a panel discussion. We have experts from various walks of life. Um, some of it's professional driven. Some of it is personal development driven. Um, and we have a panel of experts and they share, they, they just download all the information of whatever got them to their level of success with um, our audience. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we were up to 250 black men in the room every week. And uh, it was a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. We right now we're working our way back up to that because we just now started meeting back live. Um, but in the in-between, we had this, we had um, this virtual space that we were in and we decided to keep that. And that allowed us to have great guests from all over the country on to talk about um, whatever got them to where they are today. So um, we kept, that's what lab results is. We always talk about from lab results, we talk about whatever we talk about on Monday. Um, one of the things that we do uh, every week is that we make sure we honor those who came before us, those people whose shoulders we stand on, those people who, um, you know, would be really happy about us being in this space, us sharing and doing the work for our people. Um, in, in the areas where I grew up at, and my brother who's going to be on here as a guest tonight, where we grew up at in Chicago, you know, a lot of times they call it pouring out a little liquor, you know, but that's a form of libation. You know, what that means is we're pouring back into the earth um, to, to honor those that, that have gone on to, uh, be with that cloud of witnesses. So what we do here at Lab Results is very simple as it relates to honoring our ancestors. We just give one name for the night. Uh, we just allow one name and we send it up um, to the heavens to say, hey, we, we acknowledge you. Thank you for all that you did for us. Let's take it very, very quickly. If each one of you all, and I'll do the same, just call out, you know, one of your ancestors, maybe a uh, 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 one that's passed, one that, you know, meant something to you that you heard from back in the day. And they're like, yeah, I want to model myself after that person. You know, just call out their name on the count of three and I'll do the same. One, two, three. Burl Barnes. Pastor Williams. John Lewis. Martin Luther King. I say. Uh, oh, shit. So Antoine Butler, I'm in the great state of Louisiana uh, in the city of Shreveport by way of Tampa, Florida. And uh, I've been here in Shreveport for uh, about 15 years um, by way of the greatest university that ever hit the earth realm, Gram Gramlin State University. Um, I'm a graduate of the master's, pro master's program in uh, 2005. And um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker here. Um, I do uh, pastor a church here as well. And I just do a host of other things in the community, mostly um in the community around helping black men and young black boys and uh, i'm an advocate for mental health care uh so i try to do as much as i can with workshops and seminars and trainings and mentorship around really helping the disenfranchised that struggle with mental health care who really are at the back of the line but have special gifts and talents uh, that aren't readily seen by our culture and uh, helping to bring, use my gifts and my talents and my shoulders to bring those people to the forefront so that they can have a purpose in the future. So uh, I believe that's the reason uh, why I was born and why the, re the reason that I continue to be here. So I, I love what I do, love my work. I've uh, been married 16 years, got three boys, 11, 9, and 6, and I love coming home every day. So uh, that's me in a nutshell. He's been in the Black Man Lab space a bunch of times highly accomplished in the work that he's been doing. Um, and he just brings great energy when he comes to the Black Man Lab. Wouldn't you agree with that, Joe? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Love having him on here. 
Yeah, every time. And, and, and I know that our young people get a lot out of him as well. So without further ado, my brother, Jason Louder. Jason, how are you, brother? Man, I'm blessed and highly favored, brother. I appreciate love y'all so much, man. You know, you, you know, Black Man Lab, man. This is this is family. So I, I thank y'all for for inviting me again to to just share, man. I, I'm 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 blessed. I can say that. I'm truly blessed, brother. Abundantly manifest. I want to get as much information from this brother as possible. He was super powerful on Monday. We were fortunate. He's one of my brothers from Chicago, and we were super fortunate to have him. In, he, in our space here in Atlanta at the Black Man Lab. And uh, he just dropped gym after gym for our young folks. And uh, I want him to go ahead and introduce himself. Brother Tyrone. Yes, sir. So it's Tyrone Studemeyer. I am the, the, the husband of Valerie Beth Studemeyer, the father of Kennedy Joy Studemeyer. I've been married for 25 years and have a 19 year old, his second year in Hampton University. I am also serve as the global vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion for Hyatt Hotel Corporation. 100,000 employees across more than 70 countries with 20 major brands, a multi-million dollar business. My responsibility is to look to provide strategies and tactics and goals and partnerships to look at our workforce, the workplace, the marketplace, in order for us to outperform the competition, to gain the market share, to do good. We're a purpose-driven organization. Our purpose is to care for people to be their best. Diversity, equity, inclusion, is a manifestation of our purpose. We lead with empathy and we lead with care. Empathy, care plus empathy equals action. Mm -hmm. It is all about what actions we're going to take to be equitable and to be fair for all people. That is great. Well, I'm really proud of the work he's done. This is my brother, Camino Bell, Dr. Camino Bell. Camino, come on, man. How you doing? How you doing, fellas? Glad to be here. Man, glad to have you. So um, what I want to do is we're going to start the conversation, Camino, just about your background. Growing up in Chicago, where you grew up, school, family, talk about your everything that, that makes Camino Bell Camino. So, um, okay. Well, and Marty, you may not know this, but I'm originally, uh, my first few years, uh, from Seattle, Washington. I was born in Spokane, and then uh, up till five or six, I was living in Seattle, Washington with my mother and father. Um, right then, about five, uh, they got divorced. My mom moved to Chicago, uh, just she and I, and um, <clears throat> started on the north side for a year and then moved to the south side after getting familiar with Chicago. So uh, I'm a transplant, but my formative years obviously uh, were were uh, in Chicago. Uh, I consider myself a Chicagoan, and so um, <clears throat> we kind of started there. I grew up in a, well, I want to say a wonderful uh, neighborhood in Hyde Park, where uh, being uh, a uh, from a single family household wasn't really. Uh, wasn't abnormal. I grew up in this housing complex, Harper Square. Where we had a lot of um, single uh, mothers raising their uh, black boys. There was security there. It was, you know, a time where we could stay out even after the lights came on, um, and and we just cared for each other in there. A great group of uh, friends that we still have to this day, as you know. Meantime, I want to introduce. My two brothers who have been part of the Black Man Lab since its inception, um, and they have their own organization, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, I just want them to give a quick introduction of themselves, and then we'll get into the conversation. So first up, uh, brothers, jump in. Jermaine, how about you first, man? Give an intro of yourself. Hey, first of all, I want to say, man, thank you to the Black Man Lab, man, and all y'all do for the community and all y'all do for the brotherhood. Uh, man, and how y'all embraced, uh, I'm a father first from the start, and you know, man, we just want to say we, we thank y'all for y'all support, and any brothers that have support us, man, we thank y'all about a shirt, just say it, say it out your mouth, man, we thank y'all brothers, man, but uh, I'm Jermaine Todd, I'm from Southwest Atlanta, uh, man, I, I played baseball growing up, man, my mom passed away when I was like 20 years old. 
kind of grew up without my father in my life, but he was around. Um, he he played baseball, but it was so weird that uh, I never got to throw a baseball with my father. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that kind of fuel, like, uh, what our passion is today is uh, I'm a father first. We mentor fatherless boys between the age of 8 through 18. So we kind of fit in, like, I like to say, like, sub dads. And, you know what I'm saying, and we just one call away. So shout out to uh black man lab nation what's happening we in the building father fur yes sir we love you for it keith yes sir uh keith a lewis jr um i'm the founder here and i'm a father first with jermaine uh over the past four years we've just buried ourselves in this service but you know prior to that like jermaine said i'm i'm from atlanta as a whole really grew up in the city came up off um washington road so I got a lot of mixed variations. Me and my brother met at Mays High back in 94. So, you know, I got relationships on the south side, the west side, and play sports all over the city. So it just made me be the type of person that most people are all around. And as I became a father and then eventually a divorced father, um, the passion was invigorated to start I'm a Father First. It was a nonprofit that came from our hearts and being native sons of the city, we just wanted to really reduce the amount of fatherless homes. So from there, our programs began. Um, just want to bring Quaylen on to just give a quick background, Quaylen, of, of who Quaylen Bobbitt is. All right, boom. So that's a really deep question, but just a 30,000 foot view. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Quaylen Bobbitt. I'm 25 years old from Latonia, Georgia. I'm a graduate of Arabian Mountain High School and Morehouse College class of 2019. Currently working for the Better Business Bureau, entrepreneur, spoken word artist, musician, um, future world changer, philanthropist. I'm a gardener now. So, you know, I got a little garden that makes me happy. Uh, Is that right? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. (laughs) So that's just me in a little nutshell. There's a bunch more. I mean, I'm down again. So, yo, I get to... I get to team meetings with the Dolphins. I mean, we're about to watch film. And uh, coach calls me out and says, oh, listen, your mom called and they sent this FedEx for uh, you to take them cats. And I said, I was like, uh, well, this, you know, it's scheduled for practice. We got practice that day. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll let you out of practice. We'll let you out of practice, and then you got to go speak to the media because we've already told them we got a player here that's about to take the NBA. <laughs> the setup. <laughs> my, mom, my mom sent the shit to the team, to the <laughs> practice facility. The coach thought it was cool. Here it is. I got an article in the paper about a cat that's leaving practice to take the MCAT. And to be honest with you, I was like, yo, this is going to get me cut. <laughs> Another part of the backstory. I used to be in a rap group back in Georgia Southern. I was in a rap group as well. So, <laughs> Oh, man, we, we didn't know that. We should have had him. Joe, we should have had him busting rhymes when we were in the lab. Man, bars. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got. I have to return and bust some and bust some and, and bust some rhymes, brother. I, yeah. I definitely would do that. Absolutely, yeah, man. So I was in a rap group then, and um, we 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 actually were we stayed together up until um, man, up until two that like two thousand and two thousand and nine oh nine, um, brothers just kind of start you know, having babies and getting married. So we kind of dispersed a little bit, and I was the hype man of the group. So one of the brothers from the group called me and said, hey, man, you should be an actor because you got the most, you, you, man, you're the most animated dude I know. And I was like, acting? I don't know, man. He said, man, just, there's an audition at Georgia State University. You should go. And I said, all right, cool. So um, I went to the audition and I got there. They told me, they said, hey, here's your size. This is what you do. And I said, okay, what, what, what is this? She said, have you ever acted before? I said, no, nah, I haven't. She was like, oh, God. Okay, so just go read over these sides, and when we call your name, you're going to come in, and then, you know, you're going to go over the script. And I was like, all right, cool. So I went in the room. They called me into the room. I read over the, I read over the sides, and I said, man, this is powerful. So I started reading with the director, 
and something just happened. It was like, yo, this is this is real. No, this is real, man. We're living a true a true moment right now. So we had a a very very vulnerable true moment. I had that with her, and the the department chair she said, very nice. And then it was another another director said, hey, can you read my script? I said, yeah. So I read it with her. Same thing. I said, man, this is this is powerful. And another director said, hey, can you read mine too? No she way. said, but can you wow. yo, she said, can you do it with a Jamaican accent? I said, as a matter of fact, I can, because the dude in a rap group, he's Jamaican. So I used to mimic his voice. And so, <laughs> so, so, so I, you know, I did just so you know, because yeah. I follow you, Jason, and bro, you be killing that Jamaican accent. You be <laughs> killing it. <laughs> Thanks, my brother. Oh, bless up, bless up. Yes. Oh man. So she did that, brother. And um I, I read four, I read one, two, three, four, five, five different scripts. And so the department chair called me that night and she said, Hey, um, Jason, um, you got cast in all five. No. But she, yo, and I said, What? She said, but I can't let you do that because that wouldn't be fair for you or them because you've never acted before. So you can choose two. So man, I chose the first two that I did, man. I chose a piece called Our Liberated Justice. And that was by Dr. Asantewa Suni Ali. It was about her parents who used to be Black Panthers and they started the liberation, uh, the um, the new African, um, um, they started the, the, the coalition of new Africans. Um, uh, Baba 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 Balao Ali and Mama Fulani um, Ali, and so it was about their story. And so I did that one, and I also did the one where I played a Muslim terrorist, and um, it was just me by myself on stage, and I was atoning to God for the sins that I had committed. Mm. Wow! Oh, so those wow. are the first those are the first two pieces that I ever that I that I ever did, and 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 and. and I tell people now that acting called me because I fell in love. I, after that moment, I fell in love, man. I fell in love. So, you know, so for me, it was funny, right? Because I think all people with my personality feel like there's nobody there with them. And a lot of times, it's, as my brother had to correct me, it's because you're not letting people be there for you in the way that they know how to serve. So it started from a, pra a place of knowing that collaboration was needed but not knowing how to get it. So, I mean, it's really just grown from the first year being a prayer breakfast that you guys participated in, Black Man Lab on Monday, and then partnering with eight Atlanta Public Schools. And then now in year three, man, last year we partnered with Ford and um, B103 with what we were doing. And then, then this year, we didn't do any advertising. We just, you know, as we saw the importance of the connection, we just partnered with nothing but uh, organizations. And right now we probably have about 15 black male-led organizations. And we're just excited. We're excited to bring these men. Today we had literally, like the picture behind you, Marty, we might have had 15 brothers at G. Childs Young. When Mawali came yesterday, we probably had 15 brothers tap in. So to see 30 organizations or 30 individuals from multiple organizations, the goal is being birthed, you know, it's just connectivity, just continuing what you guys are doing. Just becoming more comfortable speaking and like performing my spoken word pieces on campus. I used to, I started off like, you know, like I said, I used to write a little love notes, put them in girls' lockers, not even signing it, waiting for them to come into class. Got to college, I got a little bit more comfortable. I'm like, okay, cool, let me talk in front of this group of people. But I would take off my glasses before I perform, so I can't really see anybody. I mean, I was just like here to feedback afterwards. I got a little bit more comfortable. All right, cool. Let me at least look people in the eye for real and actually see them. Um, and so I just started growing in my craft on that end. Uh, during Morehouse, you know, there's always a bunch of people that's like full of like conversations that's going on, civic engagement, um, things that's going on. There's people talking about history. There's people talking about economics. There's people, people talking about art and culture and just all kinds of things. And all of them I'm interested in. You know, like, I like learning. I like questioning people. I like talking. Uh, and then roll around towards graduation. I was supposed to graduate in 2018, found out the week of senior week, not finna graduate. I got to wait until 2019 and graduate. So that whole year was tough. It was for one class. Ended up taking that class, passing that class. It was a blessing in disguise because in 2019, 
that was the year that Robert F. Smith paid off all of our student loans. Oh, wow. uh, so yeah, it was crazy. So everything happens for a reason. Exactly. So uh, ended up going to speak with uh, Davis Bozeman on his radio show. That's when Attorney Davis called in. I was like, hey, come down to the Black Man Lab. Now, mind you, that was like 30 minutes before y'all was about to start. I'm at the radio station, me and my mom. So we drive all the way down to the Y. We get that. He's like, you know what? Come to my lab from tomorrow. You can start an internship. So I started working um, over at Davis Bozeman for that summer. And then I've just been tuned into the Black Man Lab ever since, uh, just because that first time it was great. The conversations every week, the people that you meet that's on the panelists, the people that's in the, um, in the audience. Right. It's absolutely amazing, man. Just like, it's an intergenerational conversation amongst like people. Like, you know, we'll have people that's like six and seven, people there that's like 67 and it's, it's crazy, man. Yes. I'm a, I'm, I'm an, I'm a native baby. I'm an AT, AT alien, full of, full of, full of, pride and true. <laughs> yeah. So, um, college uh, Park, baby, college... baby? I, well, actually, no, I didn't get, I, I missed Brady by, by, by maybe by a couple of years. I was, uh, <laughs> coughing long. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, yeah, Crawford Long, born and born in Crawford Long, man, and um, man, my mom and dad, they um, we they raised us in Pointer Ridge, a neighborhood in, um called Pointer Ridge, off of Flat Shows, man, and that's where that that's where the upbringing, that's where it all that's where it all began. I, I like to say that that's my back, that part of my backstory is is Pointer Ridge, um. And of course, I ended up going to a uh, Riverwood High School um, up in um, up in Roswell, and uh, my mom put us in the MTM program because she was just kind of like, "Hey, listen, um, go! I need you to go get it, go get it, go take care of business." And so I was in the um, International Baccalaureate program, okay. um, International Studies program. Yeah, yeah, man. So matriculated from from Riverwood, and then. Um, Went to Georgia Southern University, GSU graduate. They, they say they're the real GSU. So, <laughs> 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 so um, graduated from Southern uh, Georgia Southern in '99, man. And I was, um, man, w I guess watching my mom and my and and how my mom moved. She was a part of, you know, just NAACP. She was, um, um, a, 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 the chair of 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 um the Presbyterian Women of Atlanta. Um, um, I, she was a part of the uh the the um they helped set up a a food pantry at our church you know what i'm saying she would go into the neighborhoods and, and feed the homeless so i kind of grew up watching that so yeah. man i at georgia southern i um i was the president of the black student alliance for three years um vice president of naacp while i was there i ran for student government um became a student government member so i was heavy into the the uh activism you just start mm -hmm. watching her and my grandma you know what i'm saying so that that that's, they planted the seeds and i just i continue to carry them out you know what i mean um and so after i graduated from southern man it was like okay what am i gonna do I, I, so i covered their home games uh and everything emergent but so you know in essence i'm on the 30 or the 20 for every home game. And when these cats, and when some kind of traumatic injury comes about, not the regular sprained ankle or even a broken ankle or ACL, I don't deal with those. Uh, it's when they're, they, they're unconscious or it's their neck or something like that and they have to be transported. They need to get to the hospital. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, and I'll, do, I'll back them up for more of the primary care stuff, but there are two of us there now. Um, and but mostly I'm there for the catastrophic stuff, uh, and anything that, and I'm, I, but my day to day, I'm in the ER, uh, okay. in the in a hospital, Hackensack Hospital, which is about five miles from the stadium. Okay, so, uh, even during practice, when they need to send somebody, if they'll give me a call and I'll arrange, uh, arrange for them to be seen or in the emergency room. So that's my day to day stuff is in the emergency room. Fans kind of mean that we just like the southern hospitality, and that's what we should got to get back to. And that's why we 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 bring in trying to bring unity to our youth and mm -hmm. collaboration because it's a lot of a division with our race and within our people, and we just don't just don't know how to connect the fight on and, and unify and, and just and make it greater. So that's what we're trying to push this week 
trying to push us through the whole year because we done been through a lot with that pandemic, man. And we just need to just try to come together any way we can. So as we were talking to all those boys at uh, uh, Best Academy, and that's an all, all male school, uh, we was, I was talking to maybe like 50 or 60 sophomores, and I was like, y'all got to look around and if you say you alone, you're not alone because you got 50 brothers in here. Y'all got to unify and be a strong unit for each other. And and you just got to really tap into that to yourself to be able to accept another brother and be able to listen to him and be there for him. We're collecting medical supplies and goods for Haiti. So we've already collected several pallets of medical goods, and then we're going to ship those off to Miami, and they'll be sent to Haiti. So, you know, that's the good thing about community. Two events came out of us just leading and people saying, hey, can y'all help me? Sure, we're going to tell everybody about it, bring people. And, hey, man, it's collaboration over competition. Man, shout out North Cut and Dr. Howell for giving me an opportunity. <laughs> Even though I had two masters and I was, you know what I'm saying, I was overqualified to be a para, para pro. But since I haven't took the Gates test and out of politics, then I couldn't be a, a, a regular teacher. So, you know, I, I ended up taking the job without even knowing how much I was getting paid. And then one day I'm sitting in the car with my wife and, uh, and um, she, uh, the lady called, and I, I said, how much am I getting paid? And uh, she was like, around about 1200 a month. So, guys, you know what 1200 a month will do for you. Really nothing. Probably won't pay but maybe two bills. So I, I almost instantly started crying then. But some said, go on to take the job. So I took the job. And and I, I had to be the, the 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 crosswalk. I was in the crosswalk. I was in the morning announcements, doing the dab. So I just became a celebrity at this elementary school, man. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? That twelve hundred dollars felt like I would get paid five thousand a month. So I just became a celebrity at the school, and I I just really um, started loving on the kids. And I was like, man, this is really something I like to do. And I seen some boys that 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 were really disruptive in the class and I and I kind of studied them and was like, why are they acting why are they acting up so much, man? It was the ones that didn't have no haircuts, shoes was all holy, they were didn't didn't have good hygiene. So I was like, man, let me call Keith, because Keith was already doing stuff with Ezekiel Elliott, doing amazing stuff with his branding, had all the athletes on file. So I'm like, let me call, bro. We got father first in the cut. So I'm like, hey, bro, we need to get, we need to call some people, cut some of these boy hair and buy some shoes. The pain so, came from my personal pain, going through a divorce, driving 10 hours, five hours to and five hours back. And uh, one time I got a pistol pulled on me by the uncle of my ex-wife. And he like, boy, you got to get there alone. So, you know, imagine me driving five hours back and y'all know my, my hot-headedness. So I'm, I'm hurt. I can't even respond in the negative way. I'm just crushed. So I remember being on Facebook and saying, no matter what, I'm a father first. So the name was birthed from that pain. And then because I was doing branding and apparel for the athletes, we had just done a lot of money in merchandise sales for Ezekiel. So I said, man, we could just put it on a shirt. I saw Zeke make 102 k <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, we can put it on a shirt. We ain't gonna trip on nothing else. So I did a shirt, and you know, Jermaine, you know, he was like, bro, that's ugly. Let me change it up a little bit. <laughs> he like how I did it. So he put the block on it. Just simple changes. So the collaboration was always there. Simple changes took it from a from pain to a, a passion at the school to a profit or through a product. And then birth the passion. Because this is my second nonprofit. My first nonprofit was when I came home from prison. I was working with ex-offenders. So I knew you got to get to grants. I had an intel on 501c3s, but I had no idea what was about to take place over these next four years, whatever happened. So from the school paraprofessional to us now and cutting heads, man, we ended up going to Best Academy and cut over 2,500 heads. We ended up becoming the go-to guys for barbering. And that's when God just really hit me. He said, man, look how I promoted you. You're not a barber, but you're the go-to vendor for Atlanta Public Schools, right? So then I knew anything was possible. So picture this, guys. We went from that $3,500 check to $25,000 from Atlanta Public Schools. From the school. 
from the thousand to, to the, the thirty five to the twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Right. And I went to Atlanta public schools and it was just crazy going to the, the school system that you went to and getting twenty five thousand from them. You know what I'm saying? And right. He asked how much does it take to keep going. We put together a proposal for a million fifty seven dollars <laughs> and he approves it. Send us the first two hundred thousand within forty eight hours. So that's how everything changed. And we literally went from uh two what eleven thousand was our nine ninety. Is that what it's called? Nine ninety for last year, twenty year before? Mm -hmm. yep. Then you come here and you raise over a million and the game changed from there. That's pretty much prayer. Pray, you know, talk to my mom every day, man. She she died when I was like twenty, so you know. I pretty much and and what and what I do do if I'm in the car I try to listen to about thirty minutes of some gospel music. Cause I really cause I don't you know I really don't like pre preacher is cool you know what I'm saying if I like the preacher but I like the music better so I try to get that the good that good Holy Spirit through that music in the car for about thirty minutes. To say so. that that I I don't consider myself a Black August expert but just someone who. I recognize the need for us to redouble our efforts to strengthen our resolve around uh, liberation work and that, you know, doing, doing push-ups, doing sit-ups, meditating, fasting, and reviewing the work of George Jackson, Jonathan Jackson, political prisoners. I think it just gives us what we continue to need to press forward and and we don't you know put it on the shelf somewhere like this is ancient history there are families who are still actively living the life because their fa their family members are political prisoners so i offer that i'm glad i'm glad man you know if we only reached one young person and and that young person was quailing i know that we've done a good work because i know the power of the awakened consciousness of a young black man, because that's what happened to me at 22, 23 years old. And, that's and, that's and the, yeah, and, and the, the interesting part is, which I didn't know, I was familiar with Black August, um, but I didn't realize since 19, you said 1979, right? 1979 has been the uh, form formation of it and, and the practice of it. But the piece that, that I think has become really powerful is that people identifying during August the things that have happened. Gabriel, Gabriel Prosser, Nat Turner, the uh, beginning of the uh, Haitian Revolution uh, with Brother Bookman. You know, so you have all of these very revolutionary things happening in in the month of August. People who were born, Marcus Garvey born on August 17th. You know, so it's a lot. <clears throat> there's a lot there for for us to to really delve into and to look deeper and wider because so often we are pigeonholed into um nonviolent the nonviolent movement as if these other folks uh did not make ultimate sacrifices and and they did and in fact perhaps some of the if if we could say there have been successes through nonviolence, perhaps those successes have been birthed out of the fact that there have always been those who um, were prepared to defend uh, and liberate themselves by any and all means necessary. I think that one of the things that if you really ask our, our young people about our oppression, sometimes they're embarrassed. Mm -hmm. They're embarrassed. They, they don't know that we resisted, mm -hmm. we fought, that we didn't just allow our children to be taken and our women to be raped, but we fought, that we wouldn't just keep allowing um, people just to shoot us down in the street and so there has been, quite frankly, a level of, of embarrassment at times because they don't know. They don't know the courage 
of people who just were like, no, nah, we're not going to allow you to just wipe us off the planet of the earth. We're not going to allow you to just take our culture and take all that we are and grind it up and, and leave us. We're not going to do that. And there's, there's, see, the, 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 the victors write the history and they, they decide what's celebrated. If Brave Heart, right? When you watch that movie, Brave Heart, mm-hmm. the nobility in that level of, of brute violence. I mean, you're talking about- Absolutely. In certain parts of Europe, there was 100 years of war. I mean, that, that's, that's like, that's, that's psychopathic for 100 years to just be at war. Right. The, the, the word you're looking for is barbarian, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's crazy, man. But that is, that's a reality of what we have seen. And, and somehow that can be lifted up and created, made noble, made um, pristine, made um, into beautiful movies. And our struggle against all these odds, our struggle to maintain our humanity, our dignity, and to try to create safe space and defend our very lives has been demonized, um, has been made to, it's really been, you know, evaporated. It's just, it doesn't exist. And then any, any notion of it has just been categorized as uh, as criminal, but Patrick Henry, Patrick Henry wasn't criminal, right? Mm-hmm. George Washington wasn't criminal. Um, none of them were criminal. Even now, as we fight uh, the 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 takedown of these Confederate monuments, here it is: a group of individuals who succeed from a country, and. And they raise up memorials for those who were who were traitors to to the country, and who not just they weren't just doing sit-ins. They took up arms, right? They took people out, and so all of the the um, contradictions, the historical contradictions that exist as it relates to how other people's resistance movements are. Um, glorified and how ours um, are ultimately criminalized. You know, those are those are tough, tough questions. And so um, we are clear. This isn't a moment in our history where uh, we need to be running around um, shooting at people. Now, nah. now nah, it's much more complicated than that. Right. But we should also not forget those who um, were in a war on our behalf before some of us were even thoughts that they were trying to um, liberate us. And they'll, some will tell you, they believe that they may have erred here or there. They lost, they lost comrades. They, they um, were infiltrated by the counterintelligence program. Uh, there's a lot, it's a complicated history, but it's, it's ours. Yeah. All of it, right? You know, and I, it's all of our history. And we can't let people take what they think and spoon feed it to us. No, give it all to us and, and let us decide. Let us decide who was courageous and who was cowardly mm-hmm. and how complicated it all is. Yeah. Tell us about your habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do every day to help you to keep moving and help you to keep doing the work that you do? Um, Great. So first and foremost, prayer and Mm. pray without ceasing. So prayer is all day. I I pray when I get up in the morning, I pray for my family, I pray for unity. I'm grateful and thankful for waking up another day. Throughout the day, I'm praying that I say in the right thing, meet the right people, treat people with respect. I end my day with prayer uh, before I lay down. Um, I, part of my rituals is, you know, reading scriptures, I meditate, you know, I do my breathing exercises to center myself, uh, as you guys did. I was really, when you guys did the breathing breathing exercises that you guys did the Monday night was like, okay, this is on. 
They, they do my technique. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, breathe out. consider yeah. yourself right. You know, um, that's really great. Because what it creates is, you know, for me, a psychological safety, a safe place, right? And then I try to do good. You know, I try to make sure, again, a man of my word, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I may be late, I may be slow, but I'm going to get it done. Um, I, I make it a point to reach out to people, uh, check in, how you doing, what's going on. I think it's important to just say, just thinking about you. You know, I have seen people to say, you know what, I got that card from you in the mail. I got that text message. I was about to commit suicide because mm -hmm. I didn't think that nobody loved me. Nobody cared. Mm -hmm. You know, so I take that. I take that seriously. So, you know, I'm a big connector and I try to respond as, as quick and as fast as I can. Um, so I think, you know, uh, reach. It's, I, I'm a giver, not a taker. So it, it, it energized me to be there this weekend. Uh, my rituals is really just making sure I, I don't rush through too many things at one time. So I, I just try to not be so anxious for, for a, lot of, a lot of different things. Just, just try to stay calm, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely prayer, like he said. You know, um, the habits is just really just putting ourselves in a space of peace. You know what I mean? Because honestly, without each other, we really don't even really have a lot of people that we deal with intimately. You may talk, have a lot of associates, but, you know, we're each other's, like, person that you lean into. So I think habits for us, we've got into more real conversations, man. Like last year where we, you know, damn near ready to come to blows, you know what I'm saying? We had to sit down and our habits became intentionally talking about what we want this organization to look like. You know, and then rituals, of course, is prayer. And my habits also is reading. You know, look, I got, I got like a stack of books. I keep my Alice book with me in my book bag. You know, I read so much because even when I was incarcerated, that's how I really got my knowledge level to another level because when everybody else is talking about what's on TV, I'm reading. So, so I'm what, are you, what are your things that you do, whatever they are, on a daily basis from, you know, starting out the day to through it? Well... I try to reflect, uh, and I try to remember to reflect uh, once a day, at least, quite often at night. But when I work nights, it's just whenever the the, uh, the I remember and the urge comes upon me um, mm -hmm. to reflect because I know, like we talked about, the ups and downs that got me to where I am, and I give and I try to just say thank you and just give respect to. God, which got me through a ton of times when I thought I wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. um, most of the time I try to do that at night. Um, and then the other part for real practical stuff is is I try to work out, right? Because, uh, you know, I'm a biscuit away from, from being, you know, 280, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd love to, I, I'd love to be able to run up and down a court, COVID is taking it from me. Sure. But if, if this was before COVID, Marty, I tell you, I still get my Saturday. Well, it used to be Sundays. I drive to New York. Really? I got to run. A, a Saturday morning run. I drive 30 minutes to get in a run from 6.30 to, um, to about 9 o'clock. My wife is looking for me after that. So uh -huh. about 9 o'clock in the morning if I can get that run in. Uh, who? And I can't, and I, it ain't no run no more. It's a try. It's, uh, it's a one end to the other. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it uh, gives me, it's, it, it, it gives me a good feeling through the week. Sure, sure. He's asked um, those that we have on to share their habits, rituals, and disciplines that they do on a daily basis. So, welcome to the world, brother. We want to know your habits, rituals, and disciplines that keep you moving every day. Absolutely. I'll put, I have a Good Habits app, um, and I have them listed out, so I was checking them off. I'll read off to you all some of the things that I have on here. So the first one I have on here, uh, my affirmations slash vision board list. So either I work on my, either I say my affirmations, which are, hi, Quaylen, I love you, I'm beautiful, I'm smart, I'm educated, I'm disciplined, I'm dedicated, I'm focused, I'm loving, I'm loved, I'm unique. I'm going to do 21 songs this year. I'm going to get 21 podcast episodes done this year. I'm going to get 21 independent business owners working with me this year. I'm working on my relationship with T. I'm working on getting my submarine. 
I'm doing great things for myself, doing great things for my family, I'm doing great things for my friends, doing great things for my community, I'm doing great things for the world, man. I love you, I'm proud of you. Let's go out here and make somebody's day better. Boom, those are my affirmations. I make sure I read and listen to an educational audio every day. Make sure I do a workout. Make sure I write and recite. I make sure I talk to either a friend or a family member every day because I get busy and I know I want to make sure that, you know, I'm still reaching out to them, talk to my mentor every day. Um, and then just on the entrepreneurial side, I make sure I do one follow up with either a customer or like a prospect just to make sure because I'm still learning that um, entrepreneurial um, space. So I'm getting comfortable with doing that. So I'm just starting off with one. I can extend it from, and grow from there. But those are some of my habits, man. Hey, man. Um, all right. First of all, That's let great. me start with your your affirmation. Is that memorized? Awesome. Of course, I say them every day, bro. At least once or twice. Okay. And I've been saying that all year. That's it's that's a year, sign. Man. Hey, hey, Miley and Joe, that's a sign of a young brother, man. Because I'll be real excited to get three of my affirmations every day. Yeah, I got to <laughs> hear that, bro. You, you you out here with a straight up self speech, bro. So congratulations on that, and and I love you for it, man. Keep keep pushing that, man. That's that's great stuff, man. Overall, man. So, yes, sir. Yeah, so. Yes, sir. So, brothers, let's uh, close out like we always do, man. Uh, if y'all could lock it up just like we were together, you know, uh, I love that y'all next to each other. That's perfect, man. <laughs> y'all lock it up for real. We out here fake with it, but it, we, you know the feeling, man. So if y'all could just repeat after me, I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't, and it won't break here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. We are links in this chain. We are links in this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't break here. I Shea brothers, love y'all, man. Thank you again. And we keep pushing. What we do is we link arms and then um, just repeat this every week. So we I always ask my guests to do the same thing with me. So if we just hold your arms up like we're linking, mm -hmm. then just repeat after me. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. It will not break here. I'm a link in this chain. Lost you. There you go. What'd you say now? I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it will not break here. We are links in this chain. We are links in this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't break here. I say. Brother, say. thank you. Thank you, Camino, man. I appreciate you, bro. And just repeat after me. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link I'm in this chain. And it won't break here. And it and won't break, break here. here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a, I'm a link, link in this chain. chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. We are links in this chain. We, we are links in this chain. this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't break here. I say, especially, especially this month, especially during Black August, man. We are not.